Hello and welcome to my fifth development diary for my Mongoose Traveller implementation for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. This is where I do a show and tell of the bits and pieces that I've been working on. Um, not all of these features are released yet and actually I think most of what I'm going to cover in this video is all pre-release features. So, um, I've mostly been looking at spacecraft, um, which has also caused some <laughs> fiddling around with other areas as well, but we'll come to those in a bit. So first of all, simple thing, I've added support for some other spacecraft configurations and proper support for calculating volumes for them. So here we've got a 20,000 ton planetoid and only a certain percentage of the volume should be usable. So we can see here that we've used 12,000 tons and we've only got about 250 tons remaining, which we can make use of for that particular type of planetoid. Um, we change to that, then we can see um, how much space is left for putting hardware on um, is changed. Uh, the Big thing I've been looking at is support for roles. So um, as you may notice, this is my Deep Night Revelation campaign, um, which is my current ongoing campaign that's been going on for a few years now. And actually, it's the whole reason I decided to implement Mongoose in Foundry, because I wanted something which I could use. So for a while now, you've been able to add crew to spacecraft. And if you've got a large set of crew, then that list can get very long. And this is only a small proportion of the crew that the Deep Knight has. It has about 500 in total. Um, I haven't added them all in yet, obviously. Um, but to help manage this, there's now a way of um, dividing them into different departments. So if I go and select engineering crew, you can see all the um, things get filtered down to the engineering crew, technician crew, things get filtered down to just the mission crew. Um, and I was thinking about how to do this, um, and then it occurred to me that a simple way would be just to reuse the roles. And roles can now have, well, now do have a tick box on them to say it's a department, um, the actual UI is a bit messy at the moment. I haven't quite finished working on this. And you can also give a color to that members of that department. So um, let's say take a look at operations crew. Um, it's got a role and it's also got some skills associated with it. Um, whereas other ones like electronics, that's not a department. It's a skill set which you're giving a role to. So. We can go to a role, um, have a look at one of the player characters, and we can see that Zenobia is a marked as a scientist. Um, she's also part of the mission crew, and she's also marked as one of the travelers because she's one of the um, player characters. Um, and because of that, we can see she's got two bars on her as well. So she's got a green bar to say mission crew and a black bar to say she's one of the player characters. So if you've got a list like that, you can see which department people are in based on their colored bar. And you can also filter down by them. Now, unfortunately, at the moment, um, there's a limitation that this is what is selected here is sort of baked into the character sheet, uh, by which I mean if you have another player logged in um, who's looking at the um, Deep Knight Revelations character sheet, if I go and change the department I'm looking at, then they will also see the department change as well. Um, not like these tabs where <coughs> you can have um, different tabs on display for each play um, player that's looking. Um, I need to find a way around that. And there's a, a couple of other areas where I've added in some features and it's tied into only one player has control over it. So I I'm, I need to fix that um, hopefully before um, this, this feature gets released. Um, 
I think I did talk about, I think in the last um, development diary, was it'd be nice to be able to drag characters onto the um, scene like that. And obviously this is now, um, as you can see, this is now possible, um, which makes it easier to use a spacecraft as a sort of holder for your characters within within the game. So you can just have the spacecraft there, um, either in the side list or as a token and open it up and you can drag, drag the crew onto a scene um, when you need to do that. Later to that, we've now also changed um, Bay, um, the cargo hold to be bays. Um, it's still got a cargo hold setting under there, so you can see what cargo is stored on the ship. But we've also got a docking bay and a vehicle bay. The docking bay, that's where you can add spacecraft to, and as before, you can drag them out like that um, and add them onto the scene if you want to. Um, so spacecraft can now be docked within other spacecraft and we've also got vehicle bay now previously we didn't have support for vehicles but if we bring in that vehicle we can see that we have a vehicle so vehicle support at the moment is highly rudimentary uh, we've got a few options um, which can be set uh, you can set damage on them um, you can give them crew, so um, let's, let's say if he wants to take this out, you can um, add crew members um, in, into your vehicle and you can then drag them from that vehicle. Okay, so that hasn't been implemented yet on vehicles, that needs to be implemented. Uh, no, I know why, because they are initially. Ah, okay, and you make Dr. Melusine. Drag her onto here. We're not showing crew. Okay, so um, there's some bug there uh, where Crew members aren't showing up for vehicles. Um, I'll have to take a look at that. And well, that's the problem with doing a demo. So, but yes, you you can have vehicles, and in theory, they can have um, crew members as well. Um, but apparently, only just passengers. And yeah, there's there's very rudimentary sort um, support for vehicles. I need to figure out exactly what I want to do about that and whether I want the vehicle design system in there or just have the sort of basic designed um, set of things um, uh, rather than have, having individual hardware options like spacecraft, it, that all needs to be decided. Um, and yep, vehicles do have cargo bays, dock, uh, docking bay, vehicle bay, so you can add vehicles and spacecraft to vehicles, um, etc. So you can nest things. Right, so let's, um, so that's my current running campaign. Let's, um, uh, where are we? That one. So let's take a look at, um, so this is my development um, environment, which has got a few more features. Right, so let's open up another character. So let's open up Hannes. Uh, so I mentioned we can drag crew onto the background. Well, now you can drag um, the portrait from a capture sheet or a spacecraft and drag that directly onto a scene. Um, it makes it a little bit quicker. So if you've got someone's character sheet open, you don't need to go and refine them in the um, bar on the right um, in order to um, add them onto the current scene. Um, that wasn't too good to tick. 
particularly difficult to do um, so I might be nice to add it here as well um, that's slightly trickier um, but it'd be nice to be able to open up character sheets and do things with characters that are mentioned in in the chat bar so um what's next right okay so spacecraft and it's it's been possible to damage spacecraft for a while um, if we add the crimson fan and we do that now what we do is we've got some support for criticals so um, when you do damage to a spacecraft a dialogue will pop up um, and it will randomly choose some critical hit locations and assign severity levels to those it's very rudimentary at the moment it's something that i'm working on um, it's going to be some more development as um, before it gets released um, i haven't entirely decided yet um, how automated this process is going to be if anyone has some strong thoughts on the matter um, you know feel free to comment but um, you know to do we want to just automatically randomly roll a critical location and apply its effects to the, to, to the ship automatically or do we want to allow players or the GM to roll each critical individually um, as a sort of manual process and maybe select what weapons get destroyed what cargo gets destroyed things like that um, criticals are actually quite complicated um, it's the game rules in mongoose traveler are the sort of thing that's quite simple to do for a tabletop game but pretty much every result is unique um, so it requires a unique set of programming to in order to implement it um, so it's yeah it's going to be a while before this is complete um, and yeah it's whether it's going to be easier to do it manually or, um, or to have it automated I don't know yet but it's it's something I'm working on um, this color bar along here is basically dividing the hull into 10% segments um, you take criticals every time you hit a 10% threshold so this is just showing that the ship was already at 50% and now it's taken 60% and 70% criticals which is why it's dumped a couple of um, sustained damage criticals down here um, so if we were to damage the ship again we can see um, those are now black because they're previous damage and we've got one red critical because we're taking more than a little bit more than 10% of the ship's hull each time um, we've got criticals appearing up here now as well so we can see that we've got a severity one on the power plant the weapon and uh, on weapon systems and on the m drive uh, currently you can sort of manually remove these um, but yeah there's still more work that needs to be done apparently we so it doesn't quite handle uh, things when you go over 100% of your hull um, yet this is a real development demo um, so things come up there close that down and we can see we've got severity 3 here which is showing as um, orange and they'll show up red, as red when it gets the sort of severity 5 and 5 and 6 um, but yeah this is all being worked on it's all in progress and it's still a little bit messy um, but I'm hoping to improve and finish things before before this um, gets pushed out so another thing which I've been working on um, so if we take a look at our jump drive you can see we've got a list of advantages disadvantages now um so there's, there's nothing we can add at the moment um, but we could say that this is a very advanced drive and this now gives us options of adding new features 
Um, so this is from the customization of chip hardware from HighGuard. Um, so very advanced allows you to add two levels. So we could add a dis decreased fuel and we could add early jump and that will be the most we can add. So we can't add anything else. We then make that high technology and that gives us an, an option for a further thing. Um, we have stealth jump, which is two levels. Then we got room for one extra. And you can select multiple ones, so you can select up to three levels of something if that allows it. Selecting these doesn't currently have any effect, uh, but it does allow you to actually specify what those settings are. And yeah, it's again, it's something that's being worked on, currently in progress. Um, hopefully by the time this gets released, then this will be um, working, or at least um, at least partially working, hopefully. The complicated side of things are weapons, um, as I think I went into last time. Weapons are a two-part process adding weapons. Um, first of all, you add a turret, and then you add a weapon to that tur um, to that turret. Or you know, it might not just be a turret; it might be a uh, bay we uh, bay mounting or a spinal mount or barbette. Basically, you add a mount, and then you add individual weapons to that mount. So obviously it's not the mount that will have the high technology modifiers, it's the weapons. Um, so I need to add that feature to the individual weapons. So we have to put that. Um, it might be a trait or it might be something um, separate on that, but it would need to be on this, this sheet here rather than on the um, mount sheet. So it's... <sighs> Not ideal, but it, yeah, it, it's because of this split between a mount and the weapon in a mount. Mm. I mean, the reasoning for that was partially because having, you've got the weapon item type, um, and I've already got lots of support for rolling damage, make, you know, making attack rolls and things with weapons. And I'd either have to replicate all that in the hardware type again, which I didn't want to do. Um, so having it as a weapon type is added to the hardware mounting means I get a lot of stuff for free. It also makes it easier where you've got things like um, in this, you know, if we've got a double turret or a triple turret, um, you just add different weapons. Um, I mean, you can have a pulse laser and a beam laser and a sandcaster all added to one mount. So treating them, each of those weapon types as different items, which are added um, as part of the mount is a lot easier technically in terms of implementation than having one item, which is a little bit of everything. Um, so that's why that was done. But uh, yeah, so these are the things I'm working on really. Um, don't think there's much else to go over at the moment. I say the main focus is on criticals. Um, and yes, we do support um, criticals from both um, sustained damage and also from a high effect hits as well. Um, but yeah, this is all stuff that needs to be work, worked on and it's a bit non-trivial, so it might take a while. It's possible that a version might go out um, which has partial support and allow people to manually track. Okay, so you, you know, you take a fuel critical, you have to manually deduct fuel or take a power plant critical, you need to manually work out that you've got less power. But over time, I want um, to be able to automate this as much as possible to try and simplify bookkeeping. Um, I mean, there's a... On, on one end of the scale, that's, there's a desire to automate everything, to make the rules as 
to, to try and hide the rules to make things as simple as possible for the GMs and players. But in my mind, there's also the issue that this isn't a computer game. It's a tool to allow you to do tabletop role playing on the computer. So I don't want to completely hide um, the rules too much. Um, I do want some of it to be manual or at least give the GM the option to make things manual yeah, where possible. So whilst in terms of bookkeeping, automating things to make the bookkeeping easier, I think is a good thing. Um, but automating things which take away the power of the um, GM or, or players to make their own decisions about how things work. Um, it's something I want to try and avoid. So it's sort of trying to straddle that fine line be be between the two of them, which I'm trying to do. And critical hits um, is one of the things that really complicates that because, yeah, making, coming up with a suitable interface and displaying the information and giving the players and GMs control over that is. Um, it's not the easiest part of the rules that I've looked at implementing so far, but yeah, I will work on it and over the coming weeks, hopefully that will eventually see the light of day. So um, that's the end of my little show and tell. Um, hopefully it was interesting and useful. If you've got any comments or questions, please ask. Um, as always, if you find bugs, um, please let me know. And oh, and Yes, one other small bug fix. Um, you create macros now. You can set the name of the macro and set the icon. Um, that's a bug that's been in this probably well for an awful long time. Um, I just didn't realise it was a bug in my system. I thought it was a foundry bug. Um, so that is now fixed. Um, I might push out a patch release with that fixing before I push out the rest of the features. But I. I'll decide over the next week or so. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening to me. Um, and that's it for now. And just adding a quick addendum. Um, yep, there was a bug here. So if I, you can see, we can now see crew members in our Jeep. Um, if we go into here, we can drag crew from there onto the Jeep and add them in as crew members. Yeah, the feature I added for um, filtering by department um, didn't work if you didn't have any departments defined for that um, vehicle or spacecraft. So yeah, no one was showing up, but yep, that was a relatively easy fix, which has now been done. Okay, thank you.